Welcome to the Smart Connector podcast. It's great to see you here. I am here today with Mickey Kennedy. Welcome, Mickey. Thanks for having me. So Mickey is the president and founder of e-releases, and he helps influencers and business owners get visibility through telling their stories to the world. So we're going to talk about the power of storytelling in business, how a lot of businesses tell boring stories and how to make your story more exciting and interesting, and also how to match your story with the right media so that you can explode your growth, because that's really what it's all about. So it's wonderful to have you here, Mickey. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Yeah. So, so Mickey, let's let's talk about let's talk about you before we actually get into talking about the business of storytelling and PR and all of those wonderful things. So, tell us a little bit more about you. What's your what's your background and what's your history and how did you come to do what you do now? Right. So, I guess around 27 years ago, I was finishing up a MFA in creative writing, specializing in poetry, and my game plan was to be a waiter and write poetry on the weekends and evenings and downtime. And I did that for a summer after graduating. And I realized that it was very taxing being on concrete for 10 hour, 12 hour shifts. And I wasn't writing or reading. I was just emotionally, psychologically spent at the end of the day. So I just realized I wanted a safe office job. And so I got hired at a telecom research startup as employee number three. And because I had writing on my resume, albeit it was creative writing, they wanted me to figure out press releases and to write them and send them out to the media. And I did that. And I started to get really good at sort of determining what the media wanted. Uh, We published lots of data, but what they were interested in is the stories behind certain data, certain anomalies, certain trends and things like that. So I would send those out. This was you know, a long time ago, it was back through faxing. And after a while, uh, you know, we were getting picked up in the Financial Times, Economist, Washington Post, New York Times, all over. And I just said to myself, why aren't more businesses doing this? It's just such a, a great way to, you know, boost revenue for the business as well as credibility in the industry. Everyone knew about us. Everybody was calling and asking for details on how to get access to our products and services. And it was just really a a great time. And also a trend that was happening at that time was after I was faxing these releases, some journalists would call and say, could I just email it to them in the future? Because it's easier to work with, especially numbers and data by copy and pasting rather than a, a, a printout from a fax machine. And that's sort of what gave me the idea for, you know, building a database of journalists. So I spent about a year in my downtime, just contacting journalists and asking if I could add them to my database and send them press releases on their beat. And all, almost all of them at the time said, sure. And so I launched about a year later with a database of 10,000 journalists. And I was just a matchmaker sending press releases on behalf of clients to journalists. And over the years, PR Newswire reached out to us and really liked what we were doing and wanted to give us access to The Wire. And I was really shocked because at the time they were charging like $1,500 to move a press release nationally. And I didn't think with the budgets that my small businesses and entrepreneurs were working with that we'd be able to work together. But still to this day, all of the distributions that go out through e-releases get a national distribution over The Wire. Uh, and without having to pay anything close to $1,500. Wow, which is just amazing. So that's so interesting. And of course, I often talk about how I'm a real fan of PR, and I really recognize the power of PR. And I just wanted to pick up on something that you said about journalists and about getting a database of journalists, because I think that One of the misconceptions that people have is that it's actually really difficult to get featured in the media. And something that I noticed when our business started doing a bit of PR is that journalists are really hungry, aren't they, for for good stories? 
they, they don't are, have enough of them, do they? No, they don't. And then, you know, journalists are expected to do more with less. Uh, just the, you know, the, the economies are declining and for a lot of traditional media. And as a result, they're really under the gun to come up with lots of stories and anything that you can do to come to them with a story r- almost ready for them to mold into an article really, you know, is a great asset for them and really helps them out. And, you know, it's, 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 it's one of the things that I think people don't realize that, you know, a newswire is one of the easiest places for journalists to go to hunt for stories. And in the U S there's really two large newswires, PR newswire being the oldest and largest and uh, business wire being the next largest. And these are newswires of press releases. There's other wires out there that work through a different business model, but they don't run press releases like AP and Reuters and things like that. So it, it is, it is amazing that, you know, getting a, a release on the wire really opens you up to lots of different types of media and lots of people, you know, are hunting for that next story. Of course, that is wonderful form of leverage as well, isn't it? Because how else could you get your your valuable thought leadership and content in front of thousands of people that easily in a way? Right. Yeah, I have a case study on my website of a client during the pandemic, there was a very short-lived initiative called the Dining Bond Initiative that was set up to help restaurants that were closed during the pandemic. Mm. And people could basically give, you know, nominate their favorite local restaurant and give money that would go directly to them. And it was a, a very empowering thing. There was a lot of negative news at the time, uh, but this really resonated. I think it was because it was positive and I think it was also actionable. You know, a lot of people were sent home and, and waiting you know, not knowing what what's going to happen next. And mm-hmm. here was something that they could do that was actionable and empowering. And we quit counting the number of articles at 150. Oh. It got picked up in all the major newspapers, a lot of food trade publications. It went really large. Over $10 million in revenue was generated that oh. went to businesses. And all of it was only marketed through a press release, a single press release. So that really shows the leverage opportunity on the wire if you have something that's really just newsworthy and it can really scale in a way that you can't do it, you know, you know, pitching individually, you'd never get to that many places. Yeah. And I think the interesting thing about it is not only, as you pointed out, was that newsworthy, but also it was a really good story that that involved the emotions, right? Right. Yeah. You know, journalists are storytellers and anything that breaks through and, you know, gives you a human interest element, they really respond to. And I think that a lot of businesses, especially small businesses, try to remove anything that's human interest. And I had one client just in passing mention something that embarrassingly happened early in their business life and they had to cancel a holiday and the whole family had to go and uh, fulfill packages and get them out so they'd be ready to to be sent out Monday in, uh, for the holiday season. And I, I thought it was a, a, a cute story that a lot of entrepreneurs could identify with, and I encouraged them to include it in a release. And uh, they got a two-page spread in Inc. Magazine, and that was the lead into the article talking about this experience that a lot of entrepreneurs and other people can, do, you know, identify with, you know, overcoming obstacles, having such a, you know, a mess, a mess a misstep like that, that really involves the whole family coming together and supporting the entrepreneur. Yeah. And as you said, I think people, they love those kind of stories in a way. It's the business owner as or the entrepreneur as, as the hero battling against the odds, because we all battle against the odds as human beings, don't we? A lot of the time, it's our everyday existence. And so something like that really warms the heart, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. So let's get into talking about what is newsworthy, what isn't newsworthy, what makes a good story, what is a boring story? What is it that you see are the magic ingredients of something that is genuinely newsworthy and and will, will get editors and journalists excited? I think that something that is that the audience can identify with, you know, journalists are, you know, gatekeepers, they have to decide what they want to share with their audience. And they want to share things that are meaningful, you know, maybe entertain and delight their audience. 
they like to be seen as journalists like to be seen as curators. And so they often will put the spotlight on unknown companies or people yeah. and individuals that they think their audience doesn't know. So they're much more likely to cover a small business, a, a mom and pop, a startup, than they are to cover a well-established business, one that has a lot of revenue. And it's just the opposite of what a lot of entrepreneurs and small businesses think. They sort of think that PR is something that belongs to the reins of large, well-funded businesses. And they think that, you know, a, a journalist and the media in general is not going to respond to them. And it really is just the opposite because, you know, journalists like to get the attention of, you know, a discovery and, you know, it's not going to happen unless they're, you know, highlighting businesses that a lot of people just don't know about. Many of them are startups and small businesses and just, you know, people who've defined a very small niche, perhaps in a particular industry. And I think people do, they like the strivers, don't they? We all, most of us like the strivers. We don't, we all know about the success stories, don't we? But I think we find, we find it inspiring, don't we? When people are, we, we meet people on the way up as opposed yeah. to at the top of the mountain. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, that sounds, that's really makes a lot of sense. And so what I wanted to also ask you about, Mickey, is your broadcast media, for example, getting on television programs, does being featured in publications lead to other types of media opportunities like maybe public speaking, paid speaking gigs or being on TV? Absolutely. I think getting out there and getting the attention of the media is a great way to sort of segue into other markets. You know, it's not unusual for people to be invited to speak at conferences or, you know, in other industry events. It's not unusual for people to get plucked from a press release to go appear on Good Morning America. And we've had people on late night TV shows who have, you know, sometimes an interesting story or a very quirky product. And yeah, I had a client, Celebra Ducks, who did celebrity-inspired little rubber ducks. And they got invited to the Tonight Show years ago, and they were just a small little e-commerce website. And here they were getting national attention, tens of thousands of dollars in orders over the next few weeks. And and so it, it's, it's extremely interesting. There's all different types of media. The thing that we're seeing right now is there's a lot of influencers on social media that are now using press releases as content and, mm -hmm. you know, making that available on TikTok and Instagram. There's a lot of social media influencers in the field of fashion and so a lot of them are using press releases as a way to get industry news and sort of convey that to their audience. Really? Well, that's that's really, really interesting. And so just to go back to this thing about the quality of the story, I mean, how can you craft a story or is the story either just there or it's not? How do you actually make the story of your business interesting? Right. So some of the ways in which you can do that is, you know, just sharing your story, how your business developed, you know, what was your, your journey, you know, what was, you know, what, what was it that led you to create your business, to create your a particular product or service, you know, just sharing that. I, I know that everybody that appears on the TV show Shark Tank always starts with what was the genesis of this uh, product or service. And often it's like sharing an obstacle or a vulnerability. Maybe it was a health mm -hmm. crisis or they were laid off and didn't mm -hmm. have anything to do, but they had a hobby there where they'd sell something and they realized, could this be a business? And I think that uh, the reason so many people lead with that is because it immediately breaks through and gives you that human interest element and helps to humanize you and get you to feel for them. And I think that that's a really great way to start, you know, inventory, your, your, your business, your products, your services, are there stories there? Also, you know, people who've used your product or service, are there stories there that, you know, could, could come to light? Uh, you know, one of the most common type of press releases we get at e-releases is a product launch press release. Mm -hmm. And it's usually, here's our product and here's a list of features and here's a link to it. And it's hard for journalists to build a story with just those elements, but mm -hmm. things that you could do to really enhance your chances of getting media pickup would be a use case study, a customer who tried the product, what, what their challenge was, what the experience or result was of using the product, and then perhaps having a quote by them talking about 
you know, favorably about using the product. And all of a sudden that gives a lot more of a story arc that a journalist can build into an article. And I think that that would greatly enhance your success. So anything that you're working on, are there ways in which you can put some more elements in there that could lead to more of an interesting story? It, it, of course, you know, a use case study is anecdotal, but it really breaks through a lot of the noise of what you say your product does by actually having someone who saw it and had an actual experience and what their results were. Mm, yeah, and I'd like to just pick up on a, a couple of things as well that you said earlier, because, of course, that makes perfect sense. But also, you were talking about the genesis of a business and about how maybe when people were laid off and they hadn't got any idea what they were going to do next, and then this idea came to them and they thought, well, why not? Because I've got nothing else going on in my life or I've had some illness and I'm recovering. And I hear that so much. It's very common, isn't it? That when people, when they've got their, their back against the wall, sometimes the best, the best ideas are born, right? Absolutely. I think that if you look at where a lot of major businesses started, a lot of them came out of recessions and mm -hmm. people start businesses at different milestones and challenges throughout their life. And I think that sharing that and, you know, getting that out there is a great way for people to identify with you and sort of, you know, feel that sort of human interest element. Yeah, well, I, 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 yeah, I'm getting very inspired just talking to you. This is fantastic. So, so what is your? Would you say? Do you have a favorite story that somebody somebody came to you with, and you just think, you know, I just love that story. Well, we get lots of different interesting stories. We we had a um, a local auto repair shop in Pennsylvania contact us and said that. They were looking for SEO for a new website. They had a website that was somehow tied to the, their Yellow Page ad, and it had run for years, and I guess they were no longer going to advertise in Yellow Pages, so they lost their website, including the domain name. And oh. so they had a new domain name, and they were like, could PR help us? And I'm just like, uh, potentially it could. If you get uh, links from other people in your industry, automotive world linking to you that could really increase your SEO. And so they weren't ranking at all with their new website. And so we did a survey in their industry. Uh, and I recommend this to a lot of my clients who just feel like mm -hmm. they're not newsworthy is for you to author a survey in your industry. Mm -hmm. And so we helped coach them to ask really relevant questions that were interesting and timely right then. And, and then I contacted an independent uh, trade association that they belong to of auto repair shops in the U S and asked if they would send uh, the link out uh, of the survey to their members in exchange for us mentioning them in a press release that would go out over the wire. And a lot of the independent and small trade associations don't get a lot of media attention. Um, usually the large ones do. So a lot of them will gladly do this because it's a win-win for them to get some media attention as well. And so they sent it out and we, you know, we got the results and we, it, it really turned out that we didn't use most of the questions in the survey, but on the last page of the survey, and I usually like a four page survey, four questions on each page for a total of 16 questions. And on the last page, you can have a little fun and ask some wild questions. And that way, even if they leave at that point, you've got 75% of their uh, results. And the question we asked on the last page was, what was the strangest thing a client left in their car while being repaired? And it was just <laughs> an open field where people could write anything. So the responses were not statistically relevant, but we came up with a roundup of like really, you know, over 50 interesting, quirky little things, stories almost. And we put together, I think, around 20 or 25 of those in the press release and sent it out. And it, it did extremely well. Over 10 automotive trade publications picked it up. Oh, wow. um, their local newspaper picked it up. Several, several small newspapers across the U.S. Mm. picked it up. And because we had built out a page where we had all of the responses on the page, a lot of people linked to it. And so there were all, all of a sudden a lot of links to their website. Within six weeks, they were ranking number one for their area auto repair and before they were ranking zero. And so, you know, I had to coach them quite a bit because they really felt like, 
who are we to do a survey? You know, we're not experts. We're just a local auto repair shop. And I was like, well, there's no rules on who can be a self-proclaimed expert in the industry. It's a matter of claiming it and by doing it. And so they, they did extremely well. And I've, I've had a lot of clients who, who've used surveys and almost every time they do it and they ask really relevant questions and, you know, figure out what to focus the press release on. Cause the press release is going to focus on two or three of the questions. What are the biggest aha moments? And in that case, there was only one question that we, we ended up going with in the survey. And it was the, the one where people just wrote in their responses. And, you know, that, I think that that's something that almost any one can do. It does take a little bit more work, but if you feel like you're just not newsworthy, try that because on average, it's between eight and 14 articles. Every time you do a press release like that, the least I've ever encountered is four. And, you know, you can ask someone who works at a PR firm, you know, is, is getting four articles from a single PR campaign favorable, they will gladly say yes, because a lot of PR firms will do a series of press releases and pitches and get nothing. And you really have to keep refining and testing and, and, and tweaking and, and, you know, until you get that pickup, but here's one that almost always works right out of the bat. And I would really recommend that also knowing that the, the media loves numbers and data. So anytime that you can author numbers and data or even take publicly available data and put it together in an interesting way or use it to bolster your argument really you know, builds out a better press release and makes for a better story for a journalist and you know, gives them more elements to build, to build out their story arc. Mm. I mean, I suppose that's just authority, isn't there, in numbers and data? It's something, it builds trust, doesn't it? So it, as you said, it, it probably means that they have to do less work in order to create a piece that, that has got substance, I guess. Right, right. Mm. When you're sitting there saying that this is a challenge in your industry, that's just you asserting that. But if you mm. say that 73% of businesses in your industry fail in the first five years because of this challenge, it really brings to mm. light that this is something that is uh, important and people need to pay attention to. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that sound, sounds good. But the example that you just used, I thought that was absolutely beautiful. What a lovely little twist, very creative and very fun as well. And I'm so I'm not surprised that that had such a powerful impact for that little business, because it's such a kind of refreshing thing that nobody really would have thought of for like an auto repair shop. It's just a, a fun, different angle, isn't it? It is. And it, it, it was definitely one that sort of, you know, worked with the human interest element. We all have curiosity. And all of a sudden you have these, you know, tales of someone leaving a boa constrictor in a car, someone having to retrieve uh, their mother after hours for a memorial. They left her in an urn in the trunk. <laughs> and uh, just little stories like that, that people just really, you know, they really like and delight over little things like that. So any, any time that you can sort of bring those little elements into a press release in general, you're going to have really favorable results. Yeah. And as you said, I think the, the interesting thing about it as well is that most people don't think of an auto re repair shop as being a particularly interesting or different business. And so I think the whole idea really of that is that all of a sudden there's a there's a really strong differentiator, it's just something that it just gives them a certain flavor, doesn't it, that is very different. So I get that. I, I can see how it could make them stand out. What a great what a great story. I love that. Really do. Yeah, so so Mickey, who who are your favorite type of clients to work with now if you if you had to say you know this would be my absolute yeah love these types, types right of so i like working with all types of small businesses but the ones that i find do the best and stick with us the longest are startups i think mm -hmm. that they really recognize the value in being precise and mm -hmm. concise they really know what they do that's different than other people in the market they have an mm -hmm. elevator pitch and they can really succinctly say here is our niche and what we do that's completely different than everybody else in the industry. And mm. it allows them to, I think, better segment and work their, you know, different media angles and pitches to, to, to try different things. And I think that, you know, for that reason, you know, they, they do really well, but I don't think that, you know, 
th that they've m monopolized that. I think any business that's open to, you know, testing different things and really refining their messaging and who they are and what their elevator pitch is can do the same thing. It's just a matter of really, you know, looking at your USP or unique selling proposition, figure out what it is that makes you the business that you are and different from everybody else. And, you know, it's your story, it's your data, it's your research. It's, there's so many different avenues that you can take to sort of get there. But a lot of people, I think, don't think about that or just feel like, you know, we have great customer service. That's our USP. Well, what are ways in which we can sort of, you know, make it more tangible? You know, what are some things about your customer service that we can do that will make it stand out? Like maybe you have a library of videos that you use for onboarding. Yeah, bring that to the front and share that. I had one client that said they had no USP. They sold something that everybody sold is just in their local area. And it came out that they had over 150 hours of onboarding videos that showed all these different elements of using this complicated software that was specific to individual uses. And so I told them that we need to mention that on their website. We need to mention that in the press release because, you know, people who are comparing two products that are the same from different vendors are going to pick the cheapest usually. And mm. if you have something that defines you giving added value, they will nece not necessarily choose the cheapest. They'll choose perhaps you because they know that you're there and you're willing to provide the onboarding support and to get them to be able to actually use the software most effectively. You're so right. You're really talking about those little little unexpected extras, right? Right. The, those little differentiators. Yeah. Uh, amazing. Yeah. So, Mickey, a lot of startups, they think they haven't got the budget for PR, right? Because obviously we all know that when you're starting a business, so many, so many businesses, they're bootstrapping, they're, you know, they're struggling in the beginning because unless you, somebody is funding your business from day one, then it's, it's hard, isn't it? So how can small businesses afford PR services? like yours. Right. So I think if you work with a, a bona fide PR firm, you can expect to be paying, you know, 20,000 for a year or more. I think that one of the things that you can do to make it much more affordable is to perhaps do it yourself, work with a company like e-releases where it's just sort of a la carte. You can buy packages and there's a new customer special. And uh, I think that, you know, most people can build a campaign of six to eight releases working with a company like e-releases for well under $4,000. And uh, that's within the budget of most people. It's, you know, yeah. is it within your time frame? Can you fit it in? And I think that for a lot of people, it's definitely something that you should, you know, uh, try to fit in, whether mm. it's, you know, once every other month, once a quarter, you know, as you have major milestones in your business to sort of consider plugging in PR and, and trying to make it work for you. One of the things that people don't realize is that when you get customers from an article that's been written about you, this, we call it earned media, it's almost like third party corroboration or social proof. Definitely. Um, it's such a boost of credibility and it becomes a referral. The customers you get through yeah. these types of articles are usually great customers. They're usually not yeah. you know, price sensitive. They're not necessarily looking for the best buy. They had this warm feeling when they read this article and said, this yeah. is a company I want to work with. And the, you can take that article and that link and share it with your social media put it in front of your customers, share it with your leads and your leads. There's always some that you're not going to convert, but maybe by putting this article in front of them and they read it, maybe it pushes them over the edge and you're able to convert them. I had one client who was in a, a local carpet company in New Jersey and we had a terrible time getting them PR. They were doing one a month and after five months, we, we reorganized and brainstormed and one of the things that came out was that their biggest enemy was not another carpet company in the area, but the big box home improvement stores. And they talked in depth about why they're so bad for the carpet industry. And we put together a press release on that and how they have to compete against them. And 
you know, they have billions of dollars and, and here they are, the, these local carpet companies. And so it was a David versus Goliath thing. Oh, yeah. Just and, thinking that. Yeah. And, and, and we sent it out and it got picked up in over a dozen floor trade publications. They, they all sort of felt like it really resonated with their readers, which were other local carpet companies. Now, the interesting thing here is this client's customers are not going to read these floor trade publications, but they didn't care. They, they took them all, all these clippings, printed them out, and they ended up putting all their clippings in what they called a brag book. And every time they would go to someone's home, they would say, we may not come the cheapest, but we are really well respected. We're, you know, we've been picked spotlighted in floor trade weekly, this publication, and they just thumbed through the book showing them. They were also picked up in their local newspaper as well as New Jersey magazine. At the end of the year, they had over 30 clips. And so they started using that as part of their sales process and started converting 17% more customers as a result of using what they, their brag book. And that just sort of shows you the authority that comes from and the credibility that comes from getting real media attention. If I'm a homeowner and I've got two people coming to my home and one's $400 more, but they've been recognized nationally and they have this whole book, you know, and, and New Jersey magazine, the local papers written about them. I feel much more comfortable giving them my business than the person who's just $400 cheaper. Oh, you're so right. And uh, I often talk talk to my own clients about this, about the selling environment. In other words, what's happening around you before or at the time of sale or after you've had an in-person meeting or a consultation or whatever. And it's that whole thing of, of the, as you said, it's the, it's the authority, it's the credibility, it's the trust it's the it's the human interest. It's that thing about renting space in people's brains. I, I just love that kind of concept because because that's what builds the relationship. You don't always have, just have to be there in person, do you, doing the face to face stuff. If you if you build out that aura of that you are an interesting, a worthwhile, a valuable business that does it differently, that you care perhaps even more than other people that do what you do. And people really believe that. It's so powerful, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Okay. Well, Mickey, you know, what a fantastic conversation we've been having today. So if somebody wants to dip a toe in the water, uh, say, with 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 your business, what, what would be the best way for them to start or to reach out to you or sure. whatever? So my website's ereleases.com. All of our social media is there. All of our editors are accessible by email or chat or phone. We have no salespeople. I do have a free masterclass that goes through the strategic types of releases you should be considering. So if you built out a PR campaign of six to eight releases and you followed that, you would be doing much more meaningful releases that would stand a much higher chance of getting media pickup. And it's available for free at ereleases.com slash plan, P-L-A-N. It's not a multi-hour course. It's an hour-long video. It's very accessible. And I think it's a great way for anybody who's considering PR to get started. And again, it's ereleases.com slash plan, P-L-A-N. Yeah, and we'll we'll certainly put that in the chat as well. So so that's really, really great. And I, the thing that I love about the concept is that it, it really is very accessible, isn't it, for small businesses to tap into the power of PR through this well, this this framework and this business model that you've established, isn't it? It is. And it's a place where creativity really is rewarded. So, you know, just mm -hmm. being going through an exercise like the free masterclass and auditing your business, you'll probably come up with a brainstorm of a lot of great ideas that are probably creative and outside the box a little bit. And hopefully if you'll you'll give those a try. Yeah. And also because we were talking beforehand. If you are a business outside the U.S. as well, then PR is a great way to get into the U.S. market as well, isn't it? It is. It's a great way to sort of cut through the noise and really hone in on your market and, and get some media attention and recognition within the U.S. market. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, Mickey, it's been such a pleasure to, to speak to you today. So if somebody wanted to just reach out to you and just make a connection with you personally, where, where do you hang out? Where's the best place? Well, LinkedIn's a great place to find mm. me and reach out to me. And I think that the social media link for LinkedIn on my homepage, ereleases.com, uh, will go directly there. 
That's amazing. Well, once again, I want to thank you for joining us today, Mickey. It has been a really enjoyable discussion, and I've certainly learned a, a lot as well. So thank you so much for creating all that value and talking about the power of st storytelling, the power of PR, how actually easy and accessible it is to get into publications and get exposure for your business and increase your sales you know, through the power of imagination and tapping into this amazing framework and process that you've developed. So thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. Bye for now.